we are continuing with design of general purpose industrial helical gear reduction unit. This is part 1. In this lecture, I shall cover gear unit design, first stage, pinion and gear design, probable dynamic load and wear load capacity and then I will finalize the first stage pinion and gears. In more details, the covering portion will be design of first stage pinion and gear, estimation of wear load capacity, estimation of probable dynamic load at tooth contact, comparison of wear load capacity and probable dynamic load, finalizing first stage module considering bearing internal diameter ID. Second stage module calculation and then finalizing gear dimensions or data. Now, in the problem it is given that transmission ratio should be 37 to 40 and we have already selected the stage ratios. We have selected two stage gearbox and uh, we have considered that in first stage teeth number of pinion is 17 and gear is 81. In second stage it is that is the teeth number of pinion is 16 and teeth number of gear is 131. Although I have discussed, but here I would like to tell usually it is not preferred that transmission ratio should be more than 6 in one stage, but to make this gearbox within two stage we have taken in second stage 8.19 this is allowable first stage it should not be more than 6 in any case. We could have go for 3 stage gearbox, but it would be expensive and also design will be cumbersome. Not it is not required rather. This is one second is that we have not taken the exact ratio it is fraction that is to avoid tooth hunting which is after the repeated cycle that means, if say first stage is 4 that means, every after 4 cycles there will be same pair in contact and that increases dynamics because there will be some sort of pitch error and surface error in gears. To avoid that we have taken in fractions and ultimately our total transmission ratio has come 39.01 which is acceptable because of the reason that usually in prime mover although we want that 1500 rpm, but there will be plus minus 5 percent variations or maybe little less and as well in output also there will be some variations. So, this variation is acceptable in general purpose. Now, the material already discussed in earlier um, lecture that for pinion we have taken E N 19 A that is European norms 19 A and gear 18 A and shaft E N 8. Now, 19 A or there are um, also there is C D those are very close to E N 19 basic material is E N 19 only small variation. So, even if it is E N 19 or E N 18 the properties will be same whether it is A or B 
etcetera. Now, for the material pinion E n 19, the ultimate strength is 940 mega Pascal and yield strength is 600 mega Pascal and Brinell hardness which can be uh, raised to 300 to 340 before hobbing and uh, it will uh, produce quite accurate gears. Similarly, for EN 18 it is ultimate strength is 8, 860 mega Pascal and yield strength is 550 mega Pascal and hardness 250 to 300 which could be raised to 300 to 340, but it is not required usually the if the, la, the gear may have less hardness than the pinion that we will discuss later. And shaft it, it is not hardened if necessary it can be hardened. Now, in first stage design selected normal module we have already taken 2.5 millimeter. Here I would like to mention that uh, allowable strength we have taken 2.5 times less than the yield strength. Yield strength divided by 2.5 in both cases has been taken as the allowable strength of the material and C V, C W etcetera has been taken and we have already selected the module 2.5 millimeter is satisfactory. Now, we shall calculate the allowable strength in wear load or contact load which is expressed by F w is expressed by k which is a factor depends on material accuracy, hardness etcetera. Q g that a ratio teeth number of the gears and pinion it is related to the teeth number of gears and pinion and d p p that is pitch diameter of pinion first subscript for pitch second sub subscript for pinion and then b is the active width of the gear this is we have considered for spar gear state tooth spar gear now these relations are q g is given by twice teeth number of gears divided by summation of pinion and gear teeth number which comes to 1.653 and p is the active width of the gear we have considered the width factor psi is equal to 20 so 2.5 into 20 it comes 5 into 10 to the power minus 2 meter that is 50 millimeter now d p p that is pitch diameter of pinion is 17 into 2.5 divided by cos beta we have considered helical gear so we have taken 0.978 okay, into 10 to the power 3 which becomes 43.456 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter that is it is 43.456 millimeter for 300 bhn in gear and uh, 350 bhn in pinion k can be taken as 1.8 into 10 to the power 6 pascals for 20 degree in volute. This is from available data in uh, uh, machine design books or um, design data book. Now, for this calculations therefore, it comes 1.8 into 10 to the power 6 into 1.653 into 43.456 into 10 to the power minus 3 which becomes into 50 into 10 to the power minus 3 that is b width. 
So, this becomes 6465 Newton. So, that means at the tooth contact safely we can apply 6465 Newton load. Now, we shall consider the probable dynamic load. Uh, one thing I would like to mention that in earlier e um, equation that means for wear load um, it is for helical gear cos cube cos beta is the denominator, but here we have not considered that is 0.978 we have not considered for that wear load would be slightly more. Now, probable dynamic load is F d is equal to we are considering in the direction of normal directions, because what the wear load strength we have calculated it, it is in the direction of normal. So, we consider a, the normal load that divided by the velocity factor. This velocity factor already we have calculated earlier. Now, the F t which can be given is 2 t by d p p that is pitch diameter of pinion. So, 2 into 60. Now, here as we have considered the a factor of safety of 2 multi, um, that we have multiplied with the torque in calculation of gear teeth module. So, here also we consider the same load 2 into 60 divided by 43.456 into 10 to the power 3, which becomes 2761.4 Newton. And in normal directions, this load would be 3004.15. 4 this formula I have shown earlier. Here I would like to mention that helix angle we have considered the 12 degree that is nominal, it may need to refine while we, we shall finalize the dimensions and pressure angle is 20 degree. So, that gives us 3004.15 Newton in the normal directions. Now, already for 2.5 we have calculated the velocity factor is 0.57. Therefore, we get the probable dynamic load in the normal directions 5270.4 Newton. Now, this is as in earlier lecture we have discussed that 1.15 times of the dynamic load should be less than the wear load capacity. What does it mean? Actually, I would say that due to the dynamics load may increase up to calculated F d into 1.15 this is although momentarily, but that may cause damage to the surface even if there is no breakage, no damage at the root due to the bending. So, to take care of that we have taken that we consider that whatever the surface capacity we should um, dynamic load should not increase that. Now, in this case this 1.15 F d becomes 6061 Newton and we have uh, wear load capacity 6465 Newton. So, this we should call consider the design is satisfactory. Now, here is the question if it is not satisfied if the dynamic load load um, part is more than um, we are load capacity. Then what would do? At first instant we can increase the hardness. Once the hardness is increased then k factor increases and therefore, 
the capacity load carrying capacity where load capacity also increases. So, for example, we have taken 350 bhn of for pinion and 300 bhn for gear. Why it is like that? Actually, if we consider the momentary radius of curvature where the maximum contact load is coming, the radius of curvature of gear tooth will be more than the pinion tooth if the ratio is high in the order of 3, 4. Therefore, we may not need that much hardness of the gear that is why 50 difference is usual. Now, if this would not be satisfactory in that case probably we could go for pinion hardness 400 or 450 and gear hardness 350 or 300. And with that the K factor would increase and wear load capacity would also increase. But we should keep in mind in any case dynamic load is not increasing rather if we go for increasing the hardness if the hardness is 400 or so then that hardened to be done after the hop cutting. This means that if it is hardened after hop cutting there will be distortion of the teeth there will be distortion is profile usually a little more material is kept and then the gear after hardening the pinion and gears they are ground. Once it is ground then surface will be smooth as well as the core strength will increase. So, in that way uh, we may find in grinding also pitch error will be less. So, dynamic load may decrease as well as we are increasing the we are load carrying capacity and dynamic load is decreasing. So, that is one method that we can have satisfactory design, but we should keep in mind that hardness process, grinding process they are expensive. So, looking into the purpose sometimes what is done that width of the pinion active width that is B is slightly increased. So, instead of here we have taken the factor is 20 in case of helical gear we can go slightly more easily we can go for 25 if it is accurately cut. So, if we go for 25 then also the wear load capacity will increase, but the dynamic load is not going to increase because it is not dependent on the width. So, this is another method without the for that it might be size will be slightly increase, but cost may not increase that much because we are not going for hardening further or grinding. Anyway, in this case the first stage module 2.5 is safe, it is satisfactory, but we will face another problem when we will select the bearing. Before going into that, let us look into what are the major dimensions that to be decided once the module is calculated. First of all, the base circle which can be calculated from the all already it is shown that will remain fixed. So, here I have shown in the gear and pinion in mesh and there the base circle you can see from this nomenclature parametric identification that base circles and then root or dedendum circle radii. Here it is interestingly you can see that base circle of the pinion is above the root circle whereas, in case of gear it is below the root circle. It is normal 
in pinion if the teeth number is 17 or close to that even smaller then base circle will be inside, but that portion what are the portion below the base circle that is not in use. Then we need to calculate the uh, I have shown the second one is the root circle the random circle radii and then pitch circle radii R P P R P G and then R A P R A G is T or addendum circle radius and then finally, the center distance R P P plus R P G this is without any corrections if there is a correction still this center distance will be R P P R P G, but that uh, pitch circle radius of pinion and pitch circle radius of gear is not the standard one that is uh, we need to calculate after the mesh or gear tooth corrections both we should to consider. In this case we are not going to calculate or uh, considering gear tooth corrections therefore, we will consider this is the standard. Then alpha is the pressure angle and uh, P C F is the face pitch of the this is face pitch because normal pitch will be different in case of helical gear normal pitch will be different ok. And P and G stands for the subscript in subscript stand for spinion and gears. So, also it is shown that pitch point where through which the load is acting. Then we will consider that we will finalize now what should be the module. In first stage we have calculated the module is 2.5 millimeter and also considering the wear load and dynamic load we have found that it is safe. But if we calculate now that what is the pitch circle diameter this is coming 43.45 which already we have calculated earlier and if we consider the root diameter of pinion it is coming 35.25 millimeter the root diameter is the pitch circle diameter minus twice into dedendum dedendum again is equal to normal module into dedendum factor dedendum factor in standard gears is 1.25 so and module we have considered 2.5 so the diameter root diameter of pinion comes as 35.25 millimeter now if we consider if we consider the bearing this is the bearing this is the bearing this is taper roller bearing it is shown this is cut section. Now, this is the pinion root ok. So, this bearing has to rest on the shoulder of the shaft therefore, shaft should be something like that there should be step down. Now, usually this stays down down step down over the diameter not less than 7 millimeter 10 millimeter is good 10 millimeter or more is good. So, this means that this means that if we consider the bearing I D. So, we should not it should be around 25 millimeter 30 millimeter will be difficult. So, 25 millimeter now we have considered the bearing life as recommended it should be about 10,000 hours. Here it can be mentioned of course, that depends on the experience or you have uh, one should have some idea 10,000 hours is usually in higher side. And an experienced designer he at this moment he may consider that bearing ID should 
25 will not be more enough it should be at least 30 and if it is 30 millimeter to make it so we need to increase the root diameter of the pinion also this means there is no way we have to go for higher module although on the strain basis design on wear load design it is 2.5 is enough but we are going for three module considering the internal diameter of the bearing at the first stage also i would like to mention here that as this pinion is very close to this bearing this bearing will have more load than the other side bearing therefore 25 keeping the diameter 25 may be a risk that is why 3 module is ok. So, first stage module 3 millimeter. Now, we should calculate the second stage module also. Now, for the second stage, first stage module is 3 millimeter. For second stage, the torque will be design torque for first stage multiplied the ratio of first stage. In this case, this is we have considered the torque in the shaft, which is output shaft in this case T twice D, that means we are no this is design torque for the uh, gear design for the second stage. So, first stage torque now we are considering the torque of this shaft intermediate shaft. this shaft this torque is nothing but this T 2 D means second shaft and this is T i D is the input torque here and that multiplied by this ratio gear ratio of first stage which gives 60 into 81 by, by 17 that becomes 285.6 Newton meter that means the torque here is 285.6 Newton meter. So, we have to design the second stage gears that is Z, Z3 into Z4 these two sets on the basis of the torque on the pinion 285.6 Newton meter. So, in the same procedure if it is calculated we the calculation is done in the same maintaining the same procedure and it was found probably 3.5 millimeter would be quite satisfactory for the second stage but if we look into the size of the gearbox if it is 3 millimeter and if we give this is 3.5 there will be there is a possibility that here the gear will foul. So, we have taken for the second stage 4 millimeter. So, we have finalized the second stage module is 4 millimeter. Now, helix angle, helix angle we have considered it is 12. Now, if we give this is 12, then the factor at the denominator that cos beta which is coming into the pitch circle diameter as well as in the center distance, we will find that number that, uh, that value will become a fraction which is not desired. It is to be mentioned for standard gearbox, industrial gearbox usually the center distance kept multiple of tail millimeter 
However, multiple of 5 millimeter is also acceptable, but other odd values are not normally accepted. Now, we have intentionally chosen the teeth number in such a way with this value a slight modification in helix angle will get the center distance very square value. Now, what we have considered that cos and beta 1 and beta 2 that means, helix angle in first stage and second stage both are equal and 11 degree 26 minute 52 seconds for which cos beta 1 and cos beta 2 becomes 0 0.98. But here I would like to mention it is not necessary that we have to keep the helix angle same for both stage it may be different. Now, according to that this center distance the first stage center distance A 1 this is calculated Z 1 plus Z 2 into module first stage divided by 2 i into cos of first stage helix angle. So, this becomes 98 into 3 divided by 2 into 0 0.98 which 150 millimeter a very good value. Similarly, if we calculate for second stage If you calculate for second stage that becomes 300 millimeter the calculation is shown. So, that is also a good value this is the second stage. Okay. And then we calculate the gear data or gear dimensions these are in the tabular, tabular form this uh, with the drawing and also the bill of material this data is provided this is for the manufacturers and as well for also for further design. What we find the first stage pinion is pinion teeth number is 17 and gear is 81, second stage 16, 131, pressure angle 20 degree, first stage module 3 millimeter, second stage module 4 millimeter and helix angle both are uh, same for both stages which is 11 degree 26 minute 52 seconds. And now in first stage we have taken pinion is right hand gear is left hand and second stage pinion is left hand. Now, second stage that means, intermediate shaft both gear and pinion in the same direction of helix that is an important uh, fact that we, we shall discuss a little later in the next lectures and obviously, this pinion and gear should be in the opposite direction. So, it is right hand and addendum height is 3 millimeter uh, in case of first stage, second stage 4 millimeter, the addendum height is 3.75 and uh, um, second stage 5 and the pitch circle diameter 52.4 pinion and gear 247.96 first stage, second stage 65.306 and 534.69 and so on this addendum diameter materials face width. Now, another thing it is to be noted that width of the pinion is usually taken 5 millimeter more than the gear whereas, gear width is exactly taken as what we have calculated for the active contact length. Now, I shall discuss later why we take the 5 millimeter more in case of pinion later and surface hardness uh, for pinion it is 350 and for gear it is 300 in both stages. So, this is end of step 2 and now we need to make a layout of the gear and pinions so that we can find out 
the what will be the shape of these hats before going into the next step of calculations. Thank you.